Jamu Athletics and the Jamu Alumni Association are teaming up to bring you this free Matazone HD Sportsnet feature presentation. From Harrisonburg, Virginia, and the campus of James Madison University, welcome to NCAA Women's Basketball, live from the JMU Convocation Center, where today a pair of eight and two teams clash as the James Madison Dukes entertain the Vanderbilt Commodores of the Southeastern Conference. Today's game is being presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association, Comcast Sportsnet, the JMU Graduate School, Intellos Wireless, the JMU Bookstore, Residents Inn and Fox Hill Townhomes. A very pleasant good evening, everyone. A warm welcome into tonight's broadcast here on Matazone HD Sportsnet. I'm Kurt Dudley, joined by Taylor Mickleberry. We pulled him back out of retirement for a little while here to join us here this evening. Delighted to have you here for tonight's matchup between the Dukes and the Commodores. Now, this appears to be a matchup that has been in the making ever since these head coaches took over these programs, respectively, back in 2002 03. Bandy's head coach is Melanie Balkum, who in her career in Nashville has won 71% of her games at 267 and 108, and she ranks third among active coaches in the SEC with 430 overall victories, which includes seven years at Xavier and two at Ashland. Kenny Brooks is the only head coaching stint here for the Dukes. That's his only head coaching job. It's been here at his alma mater. He's also in his 12th year, and Brooks has 260 wins against 108 losses. That's a winning mark of 70.7. There you see Coach Kenny Brooks now. So for 12 years, these programs have been on similar paths. They've made many appearances into the postseason as well. In looking at this evening's encounter, though, Taylor, the one thing that really jumps off the stat page is just how well the Commodores shoot the darn basketball. Well, you know how when other teams uh, go up against Kirby Burkholder, they'll say, shooter, shooter. You can't do that with this Vanderbilt team. There's too many of them. Uh, you know, this Vanderbilt team, seventh in the nation in three-point percentage, 43.3. Seventh in the nation, field goal percentage, 49.1. Um, and they score the 27th most points per game in the country at 80.8. Um, it's just a very, very good team here. By comparison, JMU, 80th in the nation, three-point percentage, 34%. 76th in the nation, 43.1% field goal percentage. And points per game, uh, they're 109th is JMU at 71 and a half. So on paper, Vanderbilt looks a lot better, but that we all know that's not the case here because this JMU Dukes team, uh, we'll find out who is indeed uh, victorious here tonight. But overall, both of these two teams hold their own. Uh, both are at the top of their conferences for all the statistics I just mentioned. Um, you've got two very, very good players for this Vanderbilt team in Christina Fogey and Jasmine Lister. Uh, Fogey is 17.8 points per game and Lister at uh, 15.6. Their shooting is off the charts, both of these two young ladies. Now one thing we'll have to look into, this will be the second game without the third best scorer on this team, Rebecca Dahlman. She's a freshman, 11.4 points per game, um, and she played through nine games. She's out with an injury, though, and in her first game out with an injury, Vanderbilt slim win over uh, Hartford 65-56. It was their lowest scoring game of the year when you read down Vanderbilt's schedule. Uh, 96, 85, 73 points per game in just some of the few here right off the top so it will be interesting to see how they adjust they had to retool their lineup give freshman Kylie Smith and uh, Jasmine Jenkins a sophomore they got their first starts in that game against Hartford we'll probably see them a lot tonight and another big thing is who's going to come off the bench for Vanderbilt they when you replace a starter um, you have to replace them in the starting lineup but then you pick them up off the bench too who's going to be picked up off the bench here by this Commodore team. Yeah, domi the domino effect as you would. Now, as also as you look at these team, these players, uh, Christina Foji and uh, Jasmine Lister, among the uh, top 20 all-time scorers in uh, Vanderbilt history. Lister, by the way, uh, her career high, 30 points against UT Martin. Uh, Foji, well, 34 points. That was against Georgia back in January of 2012. Even uh, Katie Strawn, a sophomore, 29 against LSU. And Dahlman, who is, as you mentioned, is out with a knee injury or out with an injury, a blood clot. Actually, 23 points was her career high against App State. So all the numbers are extremely impressive for the Vanderbilt Commodores. 
How did these two teams arrive at this juncture of the season? Well, Vanderbilt with a win against Appalachian State, then defeated Western Kentucky and Delaware State, putting up big numbers in all of those, but then lost at home to Marquette, 82 to 77. Another loss, this to the second ranked Duke Blue Devils, 88 to 69, but then on a five game winning streak, Dayton, Elon, Wisconsin, and ETSU, and then on the road at Hartford. Now, one of the things is that the Commodores have built their season's resume playing a lot of home games. They are 6-1 and one at home. The Dukes, they haven't done that. This is only the third home game for the Dukes this season, and they're 8-2, and two, so they've done pretty good on neutral side courts. What a way also to come into a, a, a game here at the Convocation Center for, for Vanderbilt. This is a tough place to play. I think anybody in, uh, who's played here will tell you that. And, uh, yeah, you built the, the, home, uh, the home victories here for Vanderbilt. Then you've got JMU, who they have gone uh, to the neutral sites. They had uh, a, a lot of luck up in New York uh, with two wins over Prairie View A&M and then St. John's as well here uh, in the uh, St. John's tournament. 79-50 uh, over Prairie View and 64-51 over St. John's. Um, and then they also played in that Gulf Coast showcase as well. Um, lost two games there, Mississippi State and Wright State, but got a, a great showing at, against UCLA. So it's it's quite interesting how uh, these two teams, when you look at it, how you compare how they build their schedule. Vanderbilt loads it heavily at home first. JMU, not necessarily on the road per se, but uh, they aren't at home, we'll say that. So neutral sites, away games, um, you know, and, and Coach Brooks, I think, has said previously he likes to um, build his schedule to imitate the CAA championships in Upper Marlboro, and, and that is certainly something that's been done this year so far. Last time the Dukes played at home was all the way back on November the 24th against uh, Alcorn State, winning here 87-42. to 42. Their only other home game was the season opener on November the 8th. That was a win against an ACC foe, the Virginia Cavaliers, 63-46. So the Dukes, they have played against the ACC. In fact, they're 2-0 there. They have played against the Atlantic 10, beating Richmond, and, of course, playing already in the SEC, falling to Mississippi State. And another ACC win was on the road at Pittsburgh. Uh, that was their last, uh, well, that was a couple weeks ago on December the 4th. JMU is not the only CA team in action tonight. Later on this evening, we'll take a look at our overall standings in the conference. But uh, also on tap tonight, the College of Charleston on the road. They didn't have to go very far. They're playing at Coastal Carolina, so just up the coast for the uh, Cougars going in to face the Chanticleers. Towson didn't have to travel very far as well. They're at Morgan State, so a battle of Baltimore there. Drexel is at home tonight facing the Hampton Pirates. It is Marist hosting the Northeastern Huskies tonight, so the Huskies going into Poughkeepsie, New York. And William & Mary at home tonight at Kaplan Arena facing state rival Radford. Then tomorrow night, UNC Wilmington will be at home facing the Liberty University Flames. As we look down the road a little bit for this JMU team, the next outing, they'll take a big break for Christmas after tonight's matchup and do not get back on the hardwood again, but it will be at home on December the 29th as the Dukes will be entertaining the JMU Invitational, they will face Hofstra, excuse me, Ohio University at 2.30 on that Sunday. And that is a definite tournament format. Winners will play each other on Monday. The losers will play each other on Monday as well as uh, Monday's games at noon and at 2.30. And the other two teams in that tournament are the Spartans of Norfolk State and the Retrievers of Maryland, Baltimore County. Actually, on the 30th, it'll be a triple header here at the Convocation Center. The consolation game, the championship game, and the JMU Invitational. And I think there's a men's team that plays here every once in a while. And Matt Brady, I think, is his name. He'll bring the Dukes back here at home to face the Cardinals of Ball State. Road Warriors are those uh, men's JMU Dukes teams. Uh, two home games in their entire non-conference schedule. It's a tough road, but they're going to be real in shape for CAA play. And they are playing tonight, in fact, as we speak. They're about ready to tip off there in Greensboro, North Carolina, taking on former JMU guard Wes Miller's UNC Greensboro Spartans. And now the national anthem here played by the pep band at James Madison University.
take break as well. They're uh, hanging around to uh, perform in tonight's ball game here as the JMU Dukes and the Vanderbilt Commodores square off tonight. A couple of teams, eight and two. The sixth all-time meeting between the two programs, and uh, Vanderbilt leads the series four to one. Let's take a look at the starting lineups with Taylor Mickleberry. Taylor, we'll get it started with the visiting Commodores first. Heather Bovey, a six-foot sophomore forward from Wisconsin. Coming up next will be Kylie Smith, the freshman 5'11 from Alpharetta, Georgia. As well as Jasmine Jenkins, sophomore guard, 5'8 from Gainesville, Georgia. East Hall High School there. And then Christina Foji, senior 5'9 guard from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And finishing off with Jasmine Lister, the senior guard, 5'4 from Corona, California. And the head coach, uh, Melanie Balcom, again in her 12th season, a graduate of Trenton State University in New, uh, New Jersey. 267 wins, 108 losses, 71 winning percentage mark. for the Vanderbilt Commodores. As that band gets the crowd on its feet. And a rhythmic clapping here at James Madison University. Before we introduce the starting five for Coach Kenny Brooks. Once again, Taylor Mickleberry. Coach Brooks and the James Madison University Dukes will kick us off with a senior, Nikki Newman. From just down the road, Turner Ashby, 6'2". She is a Richard senior, guard-forward combination. Also starting for JMU, Toya Jiggets, the junior six-footer from Norfolk, Virginia, and will play it forward. Precious Hall, the sophomore guard, 5'8 from Tallahassee, Florida, will start for the Dukes as well. Reigning CAA co-player of the week from also down the road, Bridgewater Turner Ashby. It'll be Kirby Burkholder, the six-foot guard and a senior as well. And we round out James Madison's starting lineup. Jasmine Gwalfney, the redshirt sophomore, 6'2 from Bilton, Virginia, will start at guard for the James Madison University Dukes as Kurt Dolce, coached by Kenny Brooks. Coach Brooks, he's got a lot of wins here at the Convocation Center. 260 wins, 108 losses. Certainly uh, a good team he's putting out this year, and really every year, are the James Madison University Dukes. Fun to watch, and this game will be possibly more fun than others because of how close these two teams really are on paper. You heard what we, talk, oh, heard what we talked about it earlier on in the broadcast, and you'll hear it a lot more through the rest of the game as this Vanderbilt team, as they can shoot the ball. JMU, well, they could do... They're well-rounded, I will call them. Uh, they can do a lot of things, but certainly don't have the shooting statistics of the Commodores. So this team and this game is going to be a very, very interesting one for so many reasons. Well, nationally, the Dukes, they do rank 69th among the 243, excuse me, 343 Division I basketball programs for field goal percentage defense and 41st in scoring defense, just yielding 58 and a half points. If the Dukes can run, they will certainly try to do so as the opening tap is won by the Dukes of James Madison. As uh, JMU with a senior, red shirt senior there, Nikki Newman with the basketball now, finds Jasmine Guathme. Guathme easy off the glass, and the Dukes quickly on the board as Guathme, an all-tournament performer, coming off a career-high six blocks in the game against St. John's, played on Sunday in Queens, New York. And that ball will be dribbled off the foot of Forgey and the first turnover. One thing that Vanderbilt is prone to do, though, is turn the basketball over. Something that you see with high, uh, high paced teams, the Dukes can do it as well, and um, both teams will have to control that with it, how fast they run their offenses. Kirby Burkholder making her 56th consecutive start, and Nikki Newman making her 96th appearance, and there's Kirby Burkholder with a tray in the corner. And the Dukes with the early 5-0 lead for Burkholder, her 26th three-pointer of the season. And the Dukes out early on the 5-0 run. This is Kylie Smith, a freshman, now dribbling. It's Jenkins. Jenkins in the paint. Throws one up hard, banked right off the glass, and a battle for the loose ball. We're going to have a jump ball 
The possession arrow will favor the Vanderbilt Commodores, and they will keep possession with 10 seconds to play on the shot clock. Inbounding it will be Forgey from Lenape Regional. Dukes have had some athletes that have come out of Lenape in New Jersey. And it comes to Jenkins. Back out to Foji. Shot clock down to two, down to one. Here's the shot in desperation. Off the rim, it goes. And an easy rebound for Kirby Burkholder, who Looked does like lead the team in rebounding, Taylor. Looked like they uh, lost track of the time, which I was surprised that. That would be something I would think they would try and keep a track of when you only have 10 on the shot. Clock. Unforced turnover by the Dukes as Kirby Burkholder takes an additional step or two. And the first turnover for the Dukes here this evening. Dukes will drop back in the man-to-man. -man. Jenkins brings it up. Finds Smith down into the corner. Lister is cut off by Nicky Newman. Dukes matching up here. Shot clock down to 10 again. Trying to ball rip down the baseline, just tosses it up, does not hit the iron. And the Dukes nearly get another opportunity at a shot clock violation. Here's a three-pointer. Jasmine guaffed me off the heel of the rim. No good. A tough rebound. Pulled down by the Commodores. It's Bovey quickly down the court. And the Dukes defense did not get set that time as the Commodores push it down the court in a hurry. One concern certainly for the Dukes, and it's been that way even during this 8-2 start is the foul situation. And the particular ones are Jiggets and Newman, more concerned about th those two early in ball games. At the free throw line, it's Kylie Smith. And she is not one of the better free throw shooters, but she does put the Commodores on the board as she goes two for two. She's now 12 for 23 on the season. You mentioned the foul situation. Got to wonder how much the new rules are affecting uh, the JMU players as they try to adjust to them. I don't think that conversation has not been in every basketball broadcast at any level <laughs> this season, male or female. It has been a common theme. Down inside it goes. Jiggets off the iron, gets the rebound, puts it back up and in. Toya Jiggets has been on a tear of late. It's got her own rebound there. She's averaging 5.4 a game, and that one just was torn down by Toya down low. Jenkins now comes back out, top of the circle. It's Lister down inside, and the bounce pass off the end line. That'll be a turnover for the Commodores, and we'll see our first substitute come in, and it'll be for Vanderbilt. Morgan Beatty, a sophomore guard from Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Pace Academy, 4.6 points per game, four rebounds per game, and she tossed in nearly an assist per outing as well. Skipping the pass over Burkholder. Burkholder drives, tries to go through a couple of defenders, manages to track it down, down into Jiggets, back out Burkholder, three-pointer quickly, and it's good. Boy, she did not have a lot of space to hit that tray. Well, you see why she was the tournament MVP, and she's been doing that all season. She uh, has put herself, or through her competition, I should say, uh, throughout the last couple of years on the Naismith watch list. She is joined on that list by one of her opponents tonight, Christina Foji. All of them, or both of them, I should say, are on that watch list, uh, top 50 basketball players in the country. And uh, you have to think that with all of the colleges, universities in this country, we're probably pretty lucky to see two of those go at it here tonight. You don't see it a lot, uh, I would think, at the mid-major level. Right, yeah, absolutely. And just a great matchup to be played here in Harrisonburg this evening. The programs haven't played since uh, back in 2000, 2001. Coach Kenny Brooks, the year before he became the head coach here, And again, Vanderbilt won that game. The only game the Dukes won, that was in the NCAA tournament back in the 1980s in the first meeting when Sheila Mormon was the head coach here. I'm pretty sure that she is in attendance here tonight. This is Precious Hall, and the ball knocked away as Wathme tried to push it to the 
high wing to Nikki Newman. Newman against Lester. Up high it comes. This is Beatty. Beatty can't find anybody open. Starts to use the dribble. Lister backs up three pointer. It's good. Third field goal for Vanderbilt after shooting uh, four so far. Lister, a very good three point shooter. 47%, 18 for 37 now. And a media timeout here at the JMU Convocation Center. A quick start as James Madison out to the 10 5 lead. 15 45 to go in the opening half. Back with more as you're watching JMU Women's Basketball tonight on Madison HD Sportsnet, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Instead of asking yourself, where did those four years go? Think about where the next 40 will take you. Be involved at Madison. Dukes from day one, alumni for life. 10-5 Dukes with the early lead in this ball game. Let's take a look at the standings in the Colonial Athletic Association. Of course, no conference games have been played at this point, but they will be playing conference games right around the corner. JMU out in front with the 8-2 record. Then it's Delaware at 6-2. Northeastern 5-3. and three. Little log jam there. 4-4 four four for both Charleston and Hofstra. Drexel a game under 500. Drexel was actually up at that tournament with James Madison at uh, St. John's. And uh, then you have William and Mary at 1-6 and six under a new head coach at UNC Wilmington at 1-9. You know, when, when conference play starts, I think one of the most interesting matchups I want to see is James Madison taking on Drexel again. That's become sort of a rivalry here of late because of the differing ways the two teams play ball, which is why I think it's so interesting also to see how both Vanderbilt and JMU compare when they play teams of like nature uh, styles of play. I asked David Taylor, the uh, radio voice of the JMU women's basketball Dukes, what he saw in Drexel. He said, well, Denise Dillon, she can go pick out five players off the street, and they all look like Denise Dillon players about six <laughs> weeks after her coaching. One Drexel team looks like the next Drexel team in their style of play. Vanderbilt uh, has known for its good shooting, and boom, there they come right back up with it. Katie Schron, a sophomore guard from York, Pennsylvania, averages just under three points per game. She pulls her team to within three. Muff Mickens out on the floor now for James Madison. She's handling the basketball, a 5'7 sophomore from Stanton, Virginia, which is about 25 minutes south of here. Precious Hall out of Florida takes that three-pointer, tries to track down the rebound, but it's controlled by Beatty. Back come the Commodores. Down into the low post, turning around, and the shot flipped up and tapped out into the hands of Mickens. Mickens coming off a very good tournament at St. John's. Gets that ball knocked around, but she's able to recover for it. And here is Hall. She's going to get it back out to Mickens. Duke's got it down so quick. They still have 20 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Burkholder. The Euro step, and she gets it up off the rim. But it will not fall in. She'll get a couple of free throws, however. You can watch here as she takes it to the hoop and just bounces around but she'll get a chance to head out and improve on her 86% free throw shooting. Marquez Webb was the culprit, called for the foul, a freshman forward from Hoover, Alabama, from Hoover High School. And Burkholder, a very rare miss. The Dukes have number one and number two in the free throw category in the Colonial Athletic Association. Jasmine Guathme leads the league. She'll check out right now as Lady Okafor has come in for the Dukes, a post player, and Burkholder is number two in the CAA. And Kirby with seven points, a couple of trays, and the free throw. So it's Kirby seven, Bandy seven, but JMU's teammates of Kirby have put up four more, so the Dukes with the early lead. Backing it out at Tron. Down in low now is Webb, and there's the three-pointer rebound fought for between Lady and Muffin, and, well, they couldn't share the basketball with that one. 
Vanderbilt will get a new 30-second shot clock. Coming in, it does to Lister. Dukes in the man-to-man, -man, down in low. And the entry pass goes up and over for Webb as she scores against Okafer. Eight eleven nine, 9 driving its Hall. P. Hall with a skip pass over to Burke Colder. Down and low, Jiggets, Jiggets turns, and a charge will be called. Offensive foul there for Toya. She just barreled into Webb. Down low, Webb not inside the circle. Offensive foul all the time. Unless it's the men's game, then that would have been a cho that would uh, would have been a block. True. <laughs> Again, going back to the way the game's being called this year. Nikki Newman has reported back in for JMU as Jiggets takes her first breather tonight. Lister against Newman out top. Here's a three-pointer off the back of the iron. Rebound pulled in by Newman. Got athletic for that one. Used the length too. Newman, also a good three-point shooter. Wings it around to Hall. She'll drive the baseline, runs into some traffic, and a blocking violation this time called against the Commodores. Latest update on the men's Dukes at the first media timeout, 12-9. JMU is up. That's a battle between two very – both teams have seven freshmen on their roster. Goodness. Now, UNCG is a little bit older. But that's only because, well, I don't know if that's correctly stated. Andre Seminoff kind of skews the curve <laughs> a little bit. The six-year senior for JMU. All right, let's check that foul. It was on Morgan Beatty. That's her first personal. Team foul number two. Burr Calder. It's a little push off, then ch chucks the three up, and it's good. That's her third three-pointer. She's already in double figures seven minutes into the game. Coach Balkum wasn't happy over on her sideline. She thought that should have been a foul called on Kirby. Webb against Okafer. Okafer with a her first double-double as a Duke. She had 16 points and 10 rebounds against Prairie View A&M on Saturday in New York. Angela Mickens picks up that foul for James Madison. Her first team foul number three, and that'll send Webb to the free throw line, a 64% shooter, 18 of 28. And she gets that one to fall in. Webb with three points. Jasmine Guathme back in for Madison. She replaces Precious Hall. Second shot also good by Webb. She has four, and the Dukes with a three-point advantage. Mickens quickly. Oh, she nearly finds Okafer, but that ball nicely picked off by Vanderbilt. And blocked, Nikki Newman. Newman watched it the whole way. That's career block number 127 for her. She is second only to Holly Franklin on the JMU charts. Three-pointer from the corner. Will not go. Offside rebound. Back up and in by Webb. She has six. Holly Franklin holds the career blocks record for JMU. She finished. In, in fact, Franklin played in that last game against Vanderbilt in 2001. Holly finished with 186 blocks in her career. Three-point try, Burke Holder, rebound for Webb. But Franklin in that game had no blocks. <laughs> Were you looking for that too? I was, I was trying to locate it. I knew it was in our stack somewhere. Maybe Holly's watching today. Here's Burke Holder, steps back, three-pointer. That's off, off the mark totally. Duke's Still have plenty of time on the shot clock with 16 seconds. Kirby Burkholder's baby sister, Cassidy. I'll tell you about her in a second. Here's Newman. She'll draw contact. Cassidy plays at Bridgewater College. She was up at New York, and she tweeted, 
Kirby and I have one thing in common. We're good for one air ball a game. <laughs> that's, so that's the limit there you for go. Kirby tonight. Timeout on the floor. JMU maintaining a lead, but by the slimmest of margins. 14-13, 11.32 to go. Back with more after this timeout. You're watching JMU Women's Basketball on Madison HD, presented by the JMU Alumni Association. Visit the James Madison University Bookstore, your source for all things JMU. Get your official Duke gear. Open after every football game. The JMU Bookstore, support the team. Welcome back to the Convocation Center. Kurt Dudley and Taylor Mickleberry with you here tonight. 11.32 to go in our first stanza. And the Dukes out with a 14-13 lead. It's in the same place at uh, Greensboro, 2019. Jamie's still on the lead uh, for the men's game. And, uh, you know, you were mentioning, uh, mentioning New York and how uh, both Burke holders were in attendance of that game. One was playing, of course, the other had the day off from Bridgewater. But that was a block party up there it at St. John's. 12 blocks in the win against the Red Storm. Uh, Jazz Gwathme, she had six, her career high. Um, and then Lady Okafor had a career tying best of five for that grand total of 12 uh, for the game. I'm missing one or two in there as well. But uh, just block party for this JMU team up in New York. We've already seen the really good one there by uh, Newman. I don't think that'll be the last we see. Well, I know. Also, I want to say I'm not sure if the other Burke holder, the the senior sister, whether uh, Jordan was there or not this weekend as well. But uh, I just remember seeing that tweet from Cassidy. So, if that's the case, we have seen the one air ball in today's game for Kirby Burke holder. Nikki Newman at the free throw line. And quite frankly, if there is a weakness to Nikki's game, it is right there at the stripe. That's only her eighth appearance at the stripe this season, but she is now five for nine after hitting that one. Nikki on the board, and the Dukes up 15-13. Vanderbilt Lister. This is Webb. She's played well since she's come into the lineup. Lister will drive, kicks it out, three-point try on the corner, and that's good. Foji. That's her first bucket of the evening. She is a 42% three-point shooter. That's her 28th of this young season. A little rash of shots hit by Vanderbilt at this time after starting 0 for 4, now 5 for 15. Three-point try by Precious Hall. Precious a little slow to get started tonight, at least offensively. Down to the right block. Okafer is defending. Down to the left block they go, and a foul called on Jasmine Guathme. The redshirt sophomore from Liberty Bealton picks up her first foul and the team's fourth. And this will be two free throws for Heather Bovee. Spells her name B-O-W-E, but she pronounces it Bovee. Out of Wisconsin, and she hits her first free throw. 10 for 14 on the year at the free throw line now. Toya Jiggets has come back in for Madison, so has Muff Mickens. And two for two at the strike for Bovey. Bovey with a career high 19 points against East Tennessee State earlier this season. And Vanderbilt has built a lead of 18 to 15. Wathme chucks it up, no good. Rebound Hall has to bring it out on the floor. Dukes with a new 30-second shot clock. A miscommunication on that pass. Dukes still manage it. Hall tried to get it inside, just did have a seam. Pass gets off the hands of Jiggets. And another substitute coming in. Raytia Long, a sophomore forward from Dayton, Ohio, from Chaminade. 2.4 points, 3.2 rebounds. She'll make her first 
game appearance today for the visitors. And Kirby Burkholder, after a short breather, comes back into the lineup for JMU. As we drop down below the 10-minute mark here, this first period of play. Good ball fake, good ball movement by Lister. Still off the mark. Lister with the three-pointer. And that three-pointer, you can say it's the difference right now. Dukes Lee are down by three. Vanderbilt with the advantage. And Kirby with her second turnover, she bounced it on the sideline. Well, and overall, it looks like both teams have been bitten by their respective bugs. JMU by the turnover bug and Vanderbilt by the missed shots bug that they have since recovered. JMU turned it over six times so far. That's a nice move by Long. Just does use the elbow enough just to create a little bit of space and a very uh, good use of it, I should say. Not enough to get a foul called. A judicious use of the elbow. <laughs> Here's Newman. Back to Burkholder. She's going to launch a three from that direction. Off the mark it comes. Lister back out. Bandy looking to build on its largest lead thus far at five points. Driving Lister kicks it back out. And Wathme picks up her second foul after the wraparound pass comes out to Long, who was parked at the top of the lane. Watch this pass here. That's a beautiful play by Vanderbilt. Very heads up. Wathme, her second team foul, number five against JMU. Well, this will cause Coach Brooks to make a personnel move that he may not have wanted to at this early stage as Long sinks the free throw. She's a good shooter at the strike, now nine for 11. Mickens comes back in for Madison. Or make that haul does. And Long with four points off the bench. Mickens. Burkholder will launch another three. Rebound tapped around into the hands of Bovey. Three-point try, Boji. Rebound Newman, she goes down hard, and we're gonna get a foul called against Vanderbilt. And I think on that series of play, you could really see very well how fast these offenses run. Boji was already down here He's trying to set the offense up before half of the Jamie Dukes on the court were down there for defense. It's a 9 1 run working right now for Vanderbilt. Hall will try to snap it, and she does. Precious Hall with her first bucket of the night. Three pointer number 13 on the year. She shoots it at 36% accuracy. And pulls the Dukes to within four. Not a little too strong for Bovey. Dukes on the run. Hall from Mickens. Too strong for Hall. Lister wants to run it the other way. Finds the lane open. And they're going to count it. And a blocking foul called against Muff Mickens. That's the second personal on Mickens. And that brings us to our media timeout, the third one of the period, 7.45 to go. Vanderbilt now leading the Dukes, quieting the crowd somewhat. 24-18, back with more after this timeout. You're watching JMU Women's Basketball on Madison HD Sportsnet, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. I knew going to JMU would be more about just getting a master's. I just knew that it was the place for me. I feel as though that I'm a part of the institution. You will never meet a stranger. Everyone is always willing to help you out and to help you through your graduate experience here at James Madison University. The graduate school here is a, is a great choice. The education that you receive is top notch. It's one of the best in the country. And from here, from here, everything is possible. A couple other finals from today. Actually, just the one final to pass along to you at the moment. Uh, Charleston defeated Coastal Carolina, 80 to 62. And underway, uh, midway through the first half, Maris pumping Northeastern, 34 to 14. William and 
Mary with the 15-14 lead at home against Radford at, uh, with 8.04 to go in the first half there. The Toya Jiggets, assistant associate head coach, uh, Sean O'Regan. Vanderbilt shooting at 35%, certainly well below their season average for the Commodore, seven for 20. The Dukes, 37.5%, six for 16. And there is Precious Hall's three-pointer. You know, one of the things I wonder about with the pace of how this game is going is, you know, are each team getting the shots they want? Because if you, you're not an offense to set up, do you really plan your shots necessarily? But it seems like such a fast-paced JMU, at least, is not being able to get the shots they necessarily want to be that open. Lister completes the three-point play. And again, it opens up the lead for Vanderbilt. Now it's seven, 25-18. Jiggets well off the mark. They get the ball in the hands of Lister in a hurry. Down into the right corner. Now they go low left block. Webb gets the ball knocked away by Okafer into the hands of Burkholder. Mickens surveys, spins it out. Burkholder sets up for a three. In and out. That ball was halfway down the cylinder. Battle for the loose basketball. Again, it rolls out to Bovey. Tell you what, Taylor, as soon as Vanderbilt gets the ball on the offense, on the uh, defensive glass, they're down here in a hurry. It's, yeah, exactly something that, you know, it, looked, it kept looking like none of the JMU players had even crossed the midcourt stripe. And before long, there's a shot up. And they take no time off the shot clock. And, you know, typically, this is how Coach Brooks likes to run his offense, but I think even Vanderbilt is more fast-paced than that as you take a look at the three-pointer on the other end by Lister. And Lister with her second three-pointer. And that opens up the largest lead of the ball game by either team. JMU was out front there at 10 to 5. Led it uh, second media timeout 14 13. But Vanderbilt warmed up a bit on this floor here at the Convocation Center. Back in the lineup is Jasmine Jenkins. We're going to turn over JMU. Nikki Newman reporting back in for Madison. It's the second time the Dukes have been down here on the home court. They were never down to Alcorn, but they did suffer a deficit uh, for a piece of the first half against Virginia. That ball knocked away by Burkholder, and Burkholder gets fouled trying to go to the basketball. And Webb picks up her second personal foul. Jiggets will inbound right in front of us. Toya out of Norfolk, Virginia's Lake Taylor High School, a former Titan. Precious Hall. Kirk Holder on the left wing. Hall down inside. Okafer off the rim, no good. Gets the rebound, puts it right back up and in. Okafer on the board. The transfer from Providence College. Got a chance to watch the Friars' little men's basketball action last night against Yale. On the tube. I wasn't there in person. Actually, I only saw a little bit. I think I fell asleep more than I watched it. <laughs> I was going to say, come on, Kurt. We know you're the jet setter that uh, <laughs> travels the well, country. Well, yeah, I've been to such lovely places like Valparaiso, Indiana, Nacogdoches, Texas. Was in Greensboro a few days ago. Opted not to go back there today. We've been jet set, and you're right. Down low it goes. Okafor lays it in on the assist by Burkholder. Now Okafor. She's gotten really athletic here her last couple shots. Ellen was one-footed, if you will. Dukes close the gap. Back-to-back -back field goals. Gets crowded in a lot more. Running the lane and lofting it in. Foji. Foji with five points. That's her first two-point field goal of the evening. Hall. 
runs right in to the planted Lister. That'll be a charge for Precious Hall. That's her first. Turnovers mounting up on JMU. That's nine turnovers. Vanderbilt's kept it in check, though, only four for them so far. And they've seemed to here of late solve the shooting issue that plagued them to start the ball game for the first five or so minutes. Opened up this lead now to eight. And five minutes remaining. Driving the lane, and a charge is going to be called on Jenkins, who has tried to dump it off to her teammate Smith, who is all alone underneath the left block. Here you see the feed in from Burkholder to Okafer. That Jenkins foul, her first. Jenkins, by the way, is hit on 25 consecutive, or is it more than that? I think 26 consecutive free throws. Jasmine Guafney, she'll drive. She'll get a chance to go to the free throw line. She has hit 17 in a row. She's close to matching her teammate Kirby Burkholder. And a record of 20 in a row. Kirby had that going last year. 20 consecutive free throws. She's going to get two of them here. And there she goes. That was uh, for Burkholder, just to clarify that, Taylor. That was, she do, has done that twice for Burkholder, actually, and then she had 29 in a row over an eight game span. There's a put back after a miss. So if you're gonna miss, that's the time to do it. As Jiggets puts it back up and in for the Dukes. Yeah, I think, it, is Burkholder 10th and 9th on that list? Yes. That, uh, I should have specified it that way, but uh, for most, consecutive free throws. There are many more consecutive free throws made on, on the official list. Yep. Katie Hardbarger, who again played in that game against uh, Vanderbilt. I believe she did. She was with the Dukes at that time. Did she play in that ball game, Katie Hardbarger? She did, and she did not make a th free throw because she didn't take any. She didn't take that many. I'll tell you what I mean here in just a moment as Jiggets rolls it in. Her record, her JMU record for, for a consecutive free throws as a timeout is called by Vanderbilt. Oh, we got a, no, it's uh, Vanderbilt with a timeout. And we're going to take a media timeout as well. We'll be back with more of our ball game as you're watching JMU Women's Basketball on Matto Zone HD Sportsnet presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Jim and John are both covered by the nation's best networks. Jim uses Entelos Wireless. John does not. Jim saves money every month. John does not. And thanks to those savings, Jim has money left over for hula hoops, a little mood music, and access to the rooftop pool. John does not. Entelos Wireless. The difference is savings. Switch now and get unlimited data, text, and talk for just $79. Look, it's Rudolph the red-nosed Duke dog. He's got his antlers going today. Very, very festive spirit here by Duke dog and also by the pep band. Everybody's got a Christmas sweater on up there as well. Lots of folks in the crowd too. I can see a couple of Santa hats around along with the traditional purple. I want to finish that comment I was making about Katie Hardbarger. Katie's record is 39 consecutive free throws made. She did it over a span of 31 games. So it wasn't like she had a bunch of opportunities you know, packed in there. It was rather distributed, you might say. I mean, Kirby's second all-time best streak of 29 consecutively occurred over an eight-game stretch. By comparison, certainly. That means Burkholder's going to the free throw line a lot more than Hardbarger is. Hardbarger, more of a, a role player when she played here for the Dukes. Actually, she worked uh, on the air with Mike Schickman and uh, David Taylor for a season, providing her color analysis. 
Burkle to make that to Newman, the other former TA Knight, tries the tray. Rebound put up by Jiggets. And we'll get a foul in the backcourt. It's a touch foul on Burkholder. Jiggets with four rebounds so far, and at least three of them have been on the offensive glass, including that putback from the free throw. That is the first personal foul against Burkholder, but it is the eighth on the Duke, so we'll see free throws now. After any foul the rest of the way. Sands player control, of course. And Strawn at the line. She's got the one and one, hits the front end. I imagine she has some family and friends here. She's from York, Pennsylvania, so just a couple of hours from here, an easy trip. A lot closer than Nashville. She has four. 32-27. Little pressure put in the backcourt. Feed going to Okafer. She has to collect the ball, misses, gets it back, puts it back up and in with the left hand. Now on Okafor is, and, and Newman as well, kind of towering over Vanderbilt right now. The tallest player on the court for Vanderbilt right now is six foot. Newman checking in at 6'2, Okafor at 6'3. That's a nice looking jump shot. Little kick to the end there from Schron. And, of course, that matches why we see so many shots. They really get on the outside. They're fast inside when they go. And Jiggets powers her way to the rim. She has eight. And you got to get back on D in a hurry to face this Vanderbilt team again, showing how quickly they can get into the offensive set. Faking the three, it's Beatty. She just, that's all she does. She has not taken a three-pointer this year. Run. And there's a three-point try, but another 30-second. And another three-point try. Tracked down. Stolen away by Burkholder. Dukes with a transition. Kirby, though, loses the handle. Knocks it away to Mickens. Jiggets. Down low it goes. Okafor off the glass. Maybe Okafor. How many athletic shots like that have we seen? At least three, four, countless so far, perhaps but she has made quite a few down along the baseline. Great shot there. That left-handed shot powers it through. The Dukes once trailed by 10, down by one at the moment. 34-33 in the final two minutes of this first half. Three-pointer, good. Count that one for Forgy. She's got eight. That's her second three-point bucket. And the lead expands back out. 37-33. Buck 23 to go. Burkholder cut off on the baseline. The double team there. Mickens makes a nifty move into the traffic. Kicks it out. Newman launches the three. Gets good. <laughs> Newman has four. That is her tenth three-pointer of the season. And she again has the Dukes within one. First field goal of the game today for Newman as well. Nice little open shot on the left side by Long, who's come off the bench to drop in six. 39-36. Jiggets off the rim, won't go. Rebound, fought for, comes out with it. Does Beatty. Lister, left wing, Tron. Little too much kick on that one, and we get a foul called against Beatty, her second. On that play, Lister had three different options of Commodores to go to while two JMU Dukes were still in the backcourt trying to get upcourt. It's such a fast offense that, uh, you know, I, you've seen more games than I have. Have the Dukes had to have had to compete with anything like this before? They certainly did in the game I saw against Virginia. That was much more even paced. Well, this year I have not been able to physically see them quite as much. So don't know really how to compare it. Good question, though, Taylor. Rebound, Burkholder, and we have a jump ball. The possession error favors the Dukes. 
Although the coaching staff wanted a foul. There you see, there's the head coach, Balcom of the Vanderbilt Commodores. Again, a very good record, 71% winning percentage in her 12 seasons. I hear them calling shooter, shooter, shooter. I wonder who they're talking about. <laughs> Shot clock, game clock, just a split second off one another. Actually, they may be right equivalent. That's pretty close. Ball muffs it, takes the long three-pointer off the iron. No good. Rebound fought for, and they will not get off that shot. If it counted, it would not have. Or if it went in, it would not have counted, I should say. Well, it is down by three, 39-36. Vanderbilt had built a 10-point lead. Doing so by shooting the ball much better than the way they started off. JMU turning the ball over on a number of occasions well, as well, nine. Vanderbilt turning it over a few times on this last segment of the game. I think the last segment of the game really changed things up. Uh, Vanderbilt missed a shot here or there, and then the Dukes really calmed the turnovers down. So certainly that uh, last, we'll say, three to four minutes after the media timeout, Looked like a much more even paced game, whereas the right beginning of the game was much more in favor of the JMU Dukes. The middle of that half in favor of the Commodores, and that's how we come to our 39 36 score. It is a high scoring affair, not a surprise, not a surprise, as uh, we know that, uh, first of all, we know that Vanderbilt, one of the top scoring teams in the country, the Dukes, they like to run when they get a chance. We'll see if there's any adjustment in the second half of play. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back uh, for a couple of more words and uh, continue on with our halftime here as the Dukes, they're down 39-36 to the Vanderbilt Commodores. Back with more after this timeout. You're watching JMU Women's Basketball this evening on Madison HD Sportsnet presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides guests with plenty of room. Room to recharge. Room to prepare. Room to relax. Stay one night or as long as you like. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides each guest with amenities tailored to their individual needs. Spacious suites with all the comforts of home. Because it's not just a room, it's a residence. Here are the JMU women trailing 39-36. Uh, to 36, And on the men's side, JMU up. What was that score again? 42-36 at UNC Greensboro. A battle between the Dukes and the Spartans in men's basketball action. Dukes looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time uh, this season. And here we do have the 39-36 score. Taylor and I are going to take a little bit of a break, but we would like to invite you to, uh, well, actually, let me see if I can get this uh, taken care of tonight. Don't know if we're going to be able to take any emails this evening. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to, unfortunately, skip that tonight. We'll be back in a little bit as uh, you're watching JMU women's basketball here this evening. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes to get you set for the second half here. The Dukes and the Vanderbilt Commodores here on Matazone HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association.
Instead of asking yourself, where did those four years go? Think about where the next 40 will take you. Be involved at Madison. Dukes from day one, alumni for life. 39-36. Vanderbilt Commodores with the lead over the Dukes of James Madison. Kurt Dudley and Taylor Mickleberry here with you on this. What day of the week is it? Wednesday night, isn't it? Yes. Sometimes this time of year, I'm not really sure. Day to day. You asked me, and I couldn't think of it <laughs> off the top of my head. That's we just knew we had a game here this uh, midweek. So how about some stats first half there, Taylor? No, it's exactly uh, what we thought it was going to be. It was a high-paced, uh, very fast first half 39 36 Vanderbilt leads the Dukes of James Madison for the visiting uh, Commodores the uh, leading point scorer Jasmine Lister nine points for her and uh, just not so far behind her Christina Fogey G I should say is uh, eight points there two points for Heather Bovey two points for Kylie Smith and that's your starting lineup and as we talk about the bench points going to be key Katie Strong with six, Webb has six, and Long has six as well, all off the bench there. Leading uh, rebounder is Morgan Beatty coming off the bench as well, so you can kind of see how much the bench is playing a role here in what Vanderbilt is doing. Overall for the Commodores, 12 of 31 in that first half. They went 0 for 4 to start until they finally made a field goal from three-point land. It's 4 of 11, and they are 100% at the free throw line, 11 of 11. For James Madison, it is the leading scorer of Kirby Burkholder. She is three of eight from beyond the arc, and that's all she's taken is beyond the arc shots. Three of eight total field goals as well. With eight points apiece, Toya Jiggins and Lauren Okafor as well. We saw some pretty shots from Okafor in that first half. She's four of six field goal percentage wise. As well as uh, Nikki Newman getting involved in the action with four points. And Precious Hall and Jasmine Guafme each with three points apiece. Toya has got uh, six rebounds as well. Offensively, we saw quite a few uh, nice offensive rebounds from her. She's got four offensive rebounds. JMU as a whole, five of 15 from beyond the arc and 14 of 32 overall. Right now, I think uh, one of the biggest struggles it looks like is at the free throw line, three of seven. Haven't had a lot of opportunities there, but got to make those free throw shots. You do the game, you have a one point lead heading to Halftime. Turnovers for the Dukes, nine. Turnovers for Granderville is six. A couple of other scores. Uh, Northeastern trailing Marist with about two minutes to go in the first half, 48 to 37. William and Mary up on Radford, 29 24, and Drexel up on Hampton, 32 18. Both of those games are at intermission. Vanderbilt begins the second half with possession and scores the basketball as Webb. Is, she has eight points. 41-36 to start things off here in our second stanza. Wathme, Newman, Hall, Burkholder, and Jiggets on the floor for James Madison. And the ball ripped away by Bovey. She is on the floor with Webb. Also Lister. This is Jenkins with it. And don't forget Foji. There she is, Foji, three-pointer. Off the mark, rebound, back up, and in it goes by Heather Bovey. Bovey's first field goal, she has four points. Back out to a seven-point advantage. Precious Hall, she's being harassed by Jenkins. Nearly traveled, Burkholder comes to help her. Kirby will drive. There's her first two-point try. Count the bucket. Yeah, incredible. That's her first attempt from inside the three-point line, but she'll still have an opportunity to make it a three-point play at the line. That foul whistled against Lister. That's only her first on number 11. Burke Holder, the TA product. Three-point play is good. Kirby with 13. Burkholder, their co-MVP this weekend, scored 34 points in the two games at the Chartwell's Holiday Classic up in New York. Dukes uh, hung around for an additional day to spend some time in Manhattan. And on Monday, made a special effort to go to the 9-11 Memorial. 
Nice wrap around pass again to Webb. And very obvious they have worked on that type of play right there. We've seen that from several Commodores. That's kicked out of bounds. Shot clock down to 20 seconds. Yeah, and of the last couple of uh, trips down, Vanderbilt has gone down low, whereas previously they've been taking a lot of jumpers from somewhere in the wing. You know, just, just going down low, and it sags that defense just a little bit, and it's very also apparent that they don't need a lot of room to shoot. And if they get just another step closer to the bucket. Precious Hall didn't uh, need a lot of room to shoot that one. She kind of shot it back towards the basket on that one on her last shot. This will be on uh, Bovey. Oh, check it. I'm sorry. That's uh, on the Dukes, rather. Jiggets, that's her second. Knocked away by Jiggets. Boji. Ball knocked away. Tracked down by Lister. Lister will try to drive against Guathme. We got a three-second call against, I'm not sure which one. Take your pick, I guess, on this one. It was either Webb or Bovey. Precious Hall will bring it up against Jenkins. Hall, a preseason first-team all-conference selection in the Colonial Athletic Association. Guathme screen for Burkholder, three-pointer was contested, rattles around, Jiggets with a strong board, gets it back out to Guathme, Dukes with a new 30-second clock. Burkholder, we get a blocking foul as Burkholder came off the screen and she run, runs slam in to Jenkins who picks up her second foul. That was a little bit of ouch for both of them, I think. Strong collision. I'm not even sure Burkholder really saw around the corner of Rothney who's giving her a screen there. And another foul called off the basketball as Burkholder went tumbling down. Fogey whistled for the first time. That's the third team foul. Two minutes and 41 seconds into the second period. Hall kicks it out. Newman eyes the three-pointer. Long rebound comes out. Lost me back to Newman. I don't know if Newman apologized or. <laughs> I saw that. I wondered about it. Newman said something to Guathme. Either way, it gives Jiggets a chance to make a shot. Toya's in double figures again. She's got 10. That's been a common ground for her lately. Jumps out ball. Blocked by Guathme. You were right. You said you didn't think Newman's block was going to be the last one we'd see tonight. I'd hope not, certainly, and uh, makes Guelph me. Now both of them got the one here. We'll see if the second half becomes a block party like it was in New York. Soccer season just ended, but Guelph me still plays. <laughs> Get her to try out next year. And we get a foul off the basketball. Actually, they called that the way the initial indication was it was against Vanderbilt, but then the call was erroneous. They switch it off, and this will be a third personal foul against Toya Jiggets. So Toya will go to the seat. And making the way to the bucket. Precious Hall said, what did I do? Doesn't matter, Foji will go to the rim. She gets her ninth and 10th point. She'll get a chance for 11. Foul on our way in to drive to the basket. Could extend the lead here for the Commodores. Hall picks up foul number two. Yeah. 
One shot it is for Fogey. 82% free throw shooter. She has 11. Again, she had 34 points against Georgia. Another group of Bulldogs. Hall pulls up for the jumper in the lane. We've had a player or two. And we get, uh, we get a scrum going on, and looks like Webb may have hurt an ankle. Okafor will get whistled for the foul. Her first, team foul number four. So it looks like Webb will come out. She will limp out. It looks like she may be able to walk it off eventually. Raytia Long back in from Dayton, Ohio. And nice cut, easy layup for Bovey. She's got six. Here's one of those plays that we've been talking about just right around the basket and up for the layup. Well, when you uh, get a lot of good plays, good cuts close to the basket, one, your percentage is going to be high. And if you're good shooters and you've only got to shoot a 12 to 15 footer, your percentage is going to be high again. There's a high percentage shot for Lauren Okafer. She's in double figures for the second time as a Duke. And answering the opposite way, Foji with a long distance tray. She's got 14, 53, 47. Whichever team wins this ball game, it's going to be a quality W for the other. Uh, for that victory, I should say. Burkholder will get called for that foul. There's no doubt that uh, both of these teams, I don't want to say could use a win. They're in good shape being 8-2, and two, but you talk about it being a quality win, and, and it would be a solid pickup when it comes to later on if somebody needed an at-large bid, let's say. 15, 20 to go. The Dukes down by six. Vandy out in front, 53-47. Back with more after this timeout. You're watching JMU Women's Basketball on Madison HD. Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association. Instead of asking yourself, where did those four years go? Think about where the next 40 will take you. Be involved at Madison. Dukes from day one, alumni for life. Once again, welcome back to the James Madison University Convocation Center. Vanderbilt 53, JMU 47. Dukes are down by intermission. Bad intermission by three. Now down by six. It's JMU in the second half. Five for eight, 62 and a half percent. But the Commodores, six of eight, 75 percent. Including one of two on three pointers. Dukes 0 for three on trays here to open up this second half. I will say one thing that I, I've really seen from the Dukes is certainly a good thing and will go a long way in uh, making uh, this small comeback at this point is they've only turned it over one time so far in the first, uh, you know, three, four minutes and 40 seconds. But uh, the turnover battle is certainly still brewing here underneath. And now, though, I, it's kind of a foul battle as the Dukes check in with five fouls here. Three for Vanderbilt. Rimming in and out for Foji. In out of Mount Laurel, New Jersey, hits the second. She has 15. Back to a seven point lead. Wathme scores the bucket and draws the contact, moving up underneath with the foul. 
is long her second. Guathme back to the free throw line. So Jasmine starts a new streak. She has six points now. A screen. Tron takes advantage of it. Ball knocked away by Mickens coming our way. Muff can't quite keep it in bounds. Angela Muff Mickens. And she's got about a steal a game, but against UVA, she was all in the Cavaliers business, getting turnovers, steals left and right. She's got some speed behind her too. Allows her to make some interceptions or knock it away. And I'm sure she's one who's really been affected by the new rules, not to keep harping on it, but got to be mentioned. You know, the fact that she can't uh, get really physical with the defender, try and steal the ball away, has got to be tough. A foul will be called against Nikki Newman, another one of those players that is certainly affected by the hand-checking rule. Newman, however, that's her second foul tonight. Picked up one pretty early in the ball game. Well, and now Dukes with six fouls, dangerously close to putting Vanderbilt into the bonus. Webb has checked back in, Taylor, so she was only out briefly. There's a steal by Mickens. She'll run the floor, back pass. Guathme can't control it. What a pass, though, by Mickens. A hustle play. The Dukes will maintain possession. That's one of those momentum plays, emotional plays. If you hit that one, this place would have uh, really put some energy into the five on the floor. And Okafor. That might do it, though, Kurt. That might be enough to get a little injury. I should say energy. Newman sacrificed herself really on the other end to try and get that interception. Duke's down by only two now. Precious Hall will report back in for JMU. Lister back in to direct things now for the Commodores. And we get another collision in the paint. As Okafer runs through somebody. Second personal team foul number seven. Now that will put the Commodores in the bonus for the remainder, 13-59. We've talked about how good they are at the free throw line. Second in the SEC, 18th in the nation, 75.8%. OG misses the front end of the one and one. Okafer, who committed the foul, gets the rebound. So a trade off there. Okafer with her second personal foul, but she picks up the board. Nickens back out, Newman swinging around, Burkholder down into the post. And Okafer with a nifty play. She'll get a chance to go to the free throw line. As Bobie picks up her first personal foul. Okafor, this is her third game in double digits, checking in with 12 right now. Make it 13. Well, that was a rifle of a free throw. It, was. it did put a lot of air underneath it. Let's see if that's uh, typical or she just didn't get quite, a much, quite that much underneath it. She, too, was on the all-tournament team. Oh, well, maybe, maybe she Maybe she Maybe needs she shouldn't, to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Haven't seen Lady throw that many uh, free throws thus far in her career. coming off of a career high game in that tournament with the 16. Banking it in, pretty shot. Kissing it off the glass, Morgan Beatty. Well, the 
Commodores took the lead in the teams. JMU was up 14-13 at a media timeout. And they're going to call a charge on Burkholder. That'll go down as Kirby's third personal foul. It will get the fans at Convo up in arms. Jiggets will come in for Okafer. Nikki Newman after a short breather. Will bring in Burkholder, bring uh, out Burkholder, I should say. So one former night for another. And I do see uh, Jordan Burkholder is here today. There's, uh, there's the head coach. Welcome. Again, uh, 267 wins in her 12 seasons. 11 tournament appearances as well. This Vanderbilt team has always been competitive in the SEC and the nation for her 12 years. And a foul called against Nikki Newman. Nikki went down in a heat. And the bucket is good by Boji, was it? No, check that. It was. Yes, it was Foji. Foji with 17 points. I think uh, Nikki might she might have had to go see the trainer here. Uh, she's, she's got a little, yep. A little scratch. She had to be. Uh, she went back into the locker room during one of the two games up in New York. I saw that tweet. Uh, of course, anybody who saw that tweet is probably very, you know, worried about that with her history of last year had the season-ending in injury. But uh, thankfully, she's up and at him here. Well, Dr. Aaron Cash, quick work of it. Uh, she just wipes a little blood away and then wraps up the left knee. Dr. Deduck coming down also to chat with uh, Dr. Cash about, I don't know if it's about that in particular, but the timing was good for it. Second free throw is no good. Rebound pulled in by Jiggets. Oh. The Commodores have just been holding the Dukes at bay. There's a touch foul. Before the shot is off, <laughs> the grimace on the benches on the bench of JMU, they all <laughs> like darn. Fourth personal foul on Morgan Beatty. Katie Schron back in for Bandy. Jiggets turn around, off the iron, no good. Rebound, Burkholder, she scoops it up. Couldn't quite get enough on the basketball. Vanderbilt comes out with it. Lister pulls up just beyond the foul line, and the littlest woman on the court, Muff Mickens, comes away with a rebound. Such a physical rebound for Muff. Hall steps into a three-pointer, good. Within two, gets everybody on their feet in combo. That is a momentum builder if you're the JMU Dukes. Off balance shot, rebound, Guafney. She'll bring it across the timeline. And it is, the timeline is now in effect in the women's game. It had not been that way in the recent past. Mickens got a little out of control. Coach, Coach Brooks pleased with the aggression, but not particularly on that possession. Shra tries to drill one in. That'll be a dead ball rebound for Madison. It'll also bring us to a timeout. 11.38 to go. It's an exciting one here at the Convocation Center. No surprise there. 58-56, Bandy out in front. Back with more as you're watching JMU Women's Basketball on Madison HD Sportsnet, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Jim and John are both covered by the nation's best networks. Jim uses Entelos Wireless. John does not. Jim saves money every month. John does not. 
And thanks to those savings, Jim has money left over for hula hoops, a little mood music, and access to the rooftop pool. John does not. And Telos Wireless, the difference is savings. Switch now and get unlimited data, text, and talk for just $79. 58-56, Vanderbilt with the lead over the Dukes. Dukes have been uh, trailing the Vandy Commodores since Commodores took a lead of 15-14. to 14. Right after the second media timeout of our first half of play. Meanwhile, down in Greensboro, the Spartans of UNCG, they've heated up a bit from beyond three-point range. They've hit five in the second half. And... 59-55, is that what we have to score now, or have you got, got a new an score? We've got an updated one, 60-57 with nine to go. Greensboro is ahead. All right. Now on. So, Houston's faster than Twitter. <laughs> That's what we're saying. Houston Stutz has got some magic uh, abilities to check scores across the country. Even better than Twitter's, because Twitter's are pretty good. Yeah, well, the reason that uh, he's probably a little ahead of it is he's watching live stats, and Kevin Warner, who does the tweeting on the road, is busy keeping the scorebook as well. Ah. So he's got he's got to find a moment to do the tweeting. Which, as we know, very difficult to do. It can be at this times. game of basketball, especially, I don't know how uh, UNCG plays, but if he was perhaps in this game, involved in this game, there would be not a chance. If they're in the 60s and they've still got nine minutes to go, that's a pretty, pretty good pace. Pretty fast yeah. pace down there's, there There's a lot well. going on in that ball game as well. Guathme rips it away, goes up strong, draws contact, can't get it to fall, but she'll get a trip to the charity stripe. And that'll be a foul on Long. That is number three on number 44. Long. These teams in the second half, both shooting very well. Vanderbilt 8 for 13, JMU 8 for 15. The one thing I'll say that I've noticed, at least about Vanderbilt here, here so far, is with the free throws, they've seemed to have missed a couple critical ones here of late. Rothman goes two for two on this trip. And Jasmine has eight, and we are tied at 58 all. In fact, this is our first tie of the ball game. There's only been the one lead change. High pass, Lister. Good switch and knocked away by Guathme. You see that switch there between Mickens and Guathme. It actually created a mismatch Height-wise, between Bovey and Guafney, I mean, and uh, Mickens, but Guafney almost anticipated they were going to throw the ball that way. And the, the height differential between Vanderbilt and JMU just got a little bit less because they put Bovey on the floor along with uh, Webb, who makes that shot. Yeah, as the shot clock sounds, but it was well out of her hand. Vanderbilt back out in front, 60-58. to 58. But the small lineup for Vanderbilt is the one that runs really fast paced who we've seen throughout the evening. And this is kind of one of the first times the height differentials is not as great for in favor of the Dukes. And Vanderbilt with its bigger lineup right now. Shot clock is winding down. Hall will get a blocking foul as she cuts around the corner and Lister steps into her lane. Second foul called against the senior from Corona, California, Santiago High School. 15 points, 6 points per game, 4.3 assists per outing. And today she has better than her average. She's got 5 assists as of our last media timeout, so a couple of moments ago. Jickets comes back in for Madison as Guathme goes down the bench. Hall, 3 point. Oh, excuse me, get the free throw, rather. Has 11. Dukes with four players and soon to be a fifth if Guathme gets back up to the free throw line or gets another bucket in double figures. Hall rattles that one in. She's got a dozen. Very balanced scoring for the Dukes. Only one uh, out on the floor right now that's not in double figures is Muff Mickens. She's got zero. But she's trying to make contributions otherwise. Down in low, Webb. Got Okafor. 
to commit a foul for Lauren. That is her third. Uh, that's another big difference I see right now between JMU and Vanderbilt is Vanderbilt has kept, uh, you know, Lister and Foji all out of foul trouble. Meanwhile, the Dukes, Jiggets, Burkholder with three apiece, Okafor with three as well. Webb with a Baker's Dozen. She's got 13. That actually ties her career high. She had 13 earlier this year against the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Well, and you have to wonder if the reason she's been able to get 13 is because they've had to go down low a little bit here of late, have the Commodores. The rebound comes out to Schron. And that ball knocked away by Burkholder. Right into the hands of Webb. Dukes have to scramble a bit. Three-pointer is good, nice play. Good recognition by Lister, just buying enough time for Foji to get open, and Foji now with 20 points. On that play, Lister had three different Dukes in her face as she tried to take that shot, and they just traded off, defending her. Jiggets gets the new dribble as she gets it knocked away. And Burkholder, that looked like some contact from here, no whistle. Vanderbilt, and the Dukes were tied a moment ago. Now Vanderbilt trying to open it back up again. Three-point try, no good. Rebound, Burkholder. Foji trying to open up that lead once again. Comes out to Hall. Newman, Jiggets. Burkholder. Hall will drive, steps back, takes the shot. Off the iron, Webb boxing out on Jiggets, comes up with a rebound. There's the touch pass down low. And we get a traveling call against the Commodores, Bovey. Bovey's one of the young ladies who's been down along the baseline. She worked a couple in earlier here this half on the layup. That one she was in good position for. Took too many steps, though. Future JMU foe, North Carolina leading South Carolina. The Battle of the Carolinas at halftime, 39-27. Whichever team wins gets to call itself Carolina for the next year. <laughs> That's what I say anyway. They uh, fight over that. Uh, they don't worry so much about the direction. Newman with a foul. Uh, That's the third for Nikki. Make it four. Oh, four. Excuse me. Yes, you're right. And that's why I mentioned getting into foul trouble here with still eight minutes to go. Newman probably going to have to take a significant time on the bench here. And it'll bring in another Duke that's in a bit of foul trouble. That's Burkholder. She's got herself three as well. Koji hits the, the next one. She's got 22, leading all scores. This is her third game for this season with at least 20 points is Foji. Burkholder finds her way open with the dribble. Comes right back into Ber Burkholder's hands. This time she'll drive it up. Secures the points after trying the jumper and didn't let it fall. Didn't get it to fall, I should say. 15 for Burkholder. Burkholder trying to fight over the screen. So they do not get the ball in Fogey's hands. So eliminating that touch. Under seven and a half to go. Webb whips it around, looking for the screen. A switch out front. Jiggets tying it up is Hall. And that'll be, well, almost a shot clock violation, but the ball comes off the backboard into the hands of Precious Hall. Guathme. Ball looked like it was kicked. Jiggets finds herself open, takes the jumper. Why not? I think the Dukes will let that kick ball go, potentially. I think so. <laughs> A kick for a bucket? Yeah, that's a good trade, says James Madison. 
Long way out top. That's a two-pointer. Shron got hit as she threw, I thought. It popped up there. But she got that, uh, that kick at the end of her shots. Maybe that's what I saw. A few uh, former Tribe players at the William Mary men had that. David Schneider used to do that all the time. Jiggets gets her 14th point of the night. Had a career high 23 on the road two weeks ago tonight at Pittsburgh. She's the fourth Duke in double figures tonight. Okafor, Jiggets, Hall, Burke, Holder all with double digits. And we see a foul, a charge called against Long. That'll be her fourth. 6.03 to go. We've got a dandy between Vandy and JMU. 68-66, back with more after this timeout on Madison HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides guests with plenty of room. Room to recharge. Room to prepare. Room to relax. Stay one night or as long as you like. The Residence Inn by Marriott provides each guest with amenities tailored to their individual needs. Spacious suites with all the comforts of home. Because it's not just a room, it's a residence. Vanderbilt 68, JMU 66. What, they stopped scoring down in Greensboro? Uh, apparently they uh, took four minutes off. UNCG now leading JMU in men's basketball, 66-59 with 4.16 to go. The Dukes are in the bonus. Yeah, just another point from that game. Uh, JMU with only three fouls for the entire second half up until this point. Wow. So keeping them out of foul trouble is Matt Brady and the men's JMU Dukes. Take a look here at Burkholder. Nice drive to the basket. That was following up uh, a three-pointer that missed. And Jiggets as well trying to add to the lead, which has now got to six, just two points, I should say, for Vanderbilt. Trying to make up the deficit would be a better way to terminology that. Jiggets getting involved again. And she became, with those couple buckets you saw, the fourth Duke in double figures. Foul trouble for the Dukes, though, with Newman, Burkholder. Newman still on the bench. Hall is on the bench right now. Burkholder's back out there for Madison. Lister to defend against Mickens. Burkholder on the right wing, gets a screen, pulls up for the jumper. It's going to be short. Rebound pulled in by Long. 44 off to 11, Lister. Right wing, Tron. Webb, so you got both Webb and Long in at the same time. Three point try, no good. Mickens with the rebound. She dribbled it off her ankle, but she was the only one there to pick it back up. The Dukes with a chance to tie or take the lead here with five and some change to go in regulation. Whoops. Rothney tries to slide it to the wing to Burkholder. But you know, that is only the third error of this half for the Jamie Dukes. They had nine in the first half just three now. three turnovers in this period. Yep, just three. They have 12 total. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt has turned it over five times, I believe. They'll make, make it four here in the second half. Dukes now shooting below 50% in this half. Vanderbilt up to 61% in the period. Both teams at about the same for the game. 55, 45 for the Dukes, 46 for Vanderbilt. There's a turnover for Vanderbilt. So a change of empty possessions for these two teams. We'll call it a wash then. That's it. All they, don't, all they did was lose time off the clock. But we still maintain a one possession game. The Stoop fans would also notice the new James Madison Dukes painted 
on the wall at the baselines at both ends of the court. I tell you, Kurt, every time I come in here, there's something new about the Convocation Center. Be it the floor or the walls. Great place to watch basketball. Three-pointer by Hall off the rim. Rebound Jiggets. Can she track it down? Yes, she does. Throws it right underneath the bucket. I think she thought a teammate was still on the baseline. In fact, the last time I looked over there, there was a teammate on the baseline. Poked away, and Hall battling for the ball. What a nice play by Precious Hall, and that'll give the Dukes the possession as they have the arrow pointing their way. Hall fought for it after tripping up Bogey, and that got that extra possession, not an extra possession, but a new possession for the Dukes, and they're still down by two, so they have potential to tie or take the lead at this point. This will be the third time they yes. had a chance <laughs> to do will. this. Third time is the charm, I believe they say. Well, let's see. Maybe they should get it to number three, Toya Jiggets, to do so. Instead, it goes to Hall. Hall gets a screen from Jiggets, popping out. It's Newman. There's Jiggets on the block. Doesn't feel very comfortable with that. Burkholder. Hall will drive. She'll lay it in. Hall wide open to make that drive in. It was a great drive. She really, I, I thought I could see her see the basket, if that makes any sense. We are tied for the third time in this game. But again, only one lead change thus far. And the answer is put down by Lister. Well, anything you can do, I can do better. Well, that's exactly how we've traded baskets here over the last three minutes or so as the Dukes made that comeback from being down. We got a foul. On Jiggets, they're going to say? Or so. did they? I thought that was what the call was. No. The, call, the foul is on Foji. Yeah. I thought uh, I saw the point giving it back down to Vanderbilt. But that'll be her second. And it also brings us to our final media timeout. Vanderbilt 70, JMU 68. The Dukes will have the ball when we return. After this timeout, you're watching JMU Women's Basketball on Madison HD Sportsnet, presented by the JMU Alumni Association. I knew going to JMU would be more about just getting a master's. I just knew that it was the place for me. I feel as though that I'm a part of the institution. You will never meet a stranger. Everyone is always willing to help you out and to help you through your graduate experience here at James Madison University. The graduate school here is a, is a great choice. The education that you receive is top notch. It's one of the best in the country. And from here, from here, everything is possible. Vanderbilt leading the Dukes, 70 to 58. Dukes down in men's basketball, 72-63 with two and a half to go in Greensboro. We've got, certainly, it would be exciting if the JMU Dukes were to come back in that men's game, which I'm sure they could do. We'll keep you apprised of that. But here in this game, we have a currently active, very exciting game. Well, Dukes are shooting 12 of 26 in the second half for 46%. One for seven on three-pointers, so 11 for 19 on two shot, two-point shots here, field goals in this first, in the second half. Meanwhile, for Vanderbilt, 12 for 20, 60%. Two of five on three-pointers, 40%. JMU seven of eight at the free throw line. Vanderbilt five of nine, and here's Jiggets at the line again. 80% free throw shooter. Off the rim. She was fouled in the act of getting the rebound. Both teams in the double bonus. And Jiggets hits the next. Jiggets with 15. Dukes down by one. Dandy with the basketball. Three minutes to go. Webb dribbles and hands the basketball off. Whoa, she nearly traveled. Just does. Hold her ground, does Beatty. Lister directs traffic. Lister has the ball knocked away, but it gets into the hands of Lister, that is, excuse me, as it was for Brogy. And that 
is a ball that was shot as the buzzer was sounding. And apparently got out of her hands in time. And a charge is going to be called. This one against Webb. That is her third. And it'll give James Madison a possession that could put them in the lead. Dukes are going to take a timeout. Very possibly to check on Gwalfney. She got up a little slow, and you saw in the replay how she was knocked down and then kind of run over as well. So far, I think it, for the second half, JMU has really done a good job of keeping Vanderbilt in control. I mean, they've been able to come back, whereas I thought right there in the middle of the first half, I wouldn't say got out of control, but certainly Vanderbilt kind of had their way with the Dukes for, for a couple, about a 10-minute period. Uh, the Dukes were turning it over. They couldn't make the shots. Vanderbilt got hot at this point. You know, both teams have gotten hot shooting. But they kept, both teams have really kept the turnovers under control. The difference maker at this point is that uh, the three turnovers right there in succession, and also free throws. Uh, Vanderbilt missed three key free throws earlier on in this half, and you see at this point how key those free throws are in general, and, and especially in this situation. At our last media timeout, well, actually, we can we can look at what it is to the moment. Uh, JMU 16, to, or make that the Commodore 16 of 20 at the free throw line. James Madison 11 of 17, so 80 percent versus 65 percent. But those four they missed were such key free throws. You know, about the middle of this half or in the second. Well, Jiggett's just missed one down here a moment ago. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd have a tie ball game right now. Yeah, that's certainly not saying at all that JMU hasn't missed their fair share of free throws at the right times. Overall shooting, very even, though, from field goal range. 46% Vanderbilt, 45% JMU. Muff Mickens will bring it across the midcourt strike for Madison. Lister is on her to defend. Off to Guafme. Guafme will drive. Pulls up. Takes it off the glass. No good. Rebound. Fall forwards. Jiggets. Jiggets is fouled after she gets the board. She'll go back to the free throw line to shoot two. As Marquez Webb picks up foul number four. And the Dukes have Jiggets maybe at the free throw line. as She'll be looked at as uh, she paid the price for getting that rebound, apparently. Yes, she did. That's Dr. Cash. A little repair work there on the sidelines. Or... Oh, this is always pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll have to get the got, nosebleed under control right, yep. <laughs> along with the mask, and then she's going to shoot the free throw. I hope Kathy Kushner doesn't get this photo. <laughs> there you go. She's got to deal with it all. No vanity here. Boom. <laughs> well, we now know the key. She was one for three. Now going to be two for five. All right, Jiggett's the warrior. And the Dukes have their first lead since a 14-13 advantage. Comes with 2.16 to go. And the crowd rises to its feet here at the James Madison Convocation Center. Playmaker off the rim, tapped out. Jiggets with the rebound for JMU. She didn't tap it out, but she tracked it down. And the Dukes with a 71-70 lead. I don't know if that was a shot Foji wanted. She took it anyway, but that was a tough place to take one. They had her playmaker, and there's a playmaker for JMU. Wafmi, 10 points, another Duke in double figures. JMU with a three-point lead, 135 to go. Three-pointer, it's good. Lister with the answer. She has 13. We're tied at 73. It's going to come down to the wire, folks, no doubt about it. Wafmi, for Calder. Burke Holder in the lane, a chart. Whoop, let's see. Well, there was hesitation between the 
two officials, and they're going to go with a charge on Burke Holder. Yeah. And drawing the charge is Webb. Two different signals there, but they're going to keep the charge in place for Kirby, which will be Kirby's fourth. Let's take a look at that again. Can we rack that one up one more time? As Webb paid the price. Pretty close either way. Watch when, let's see where Webb is. Wow, that's really tight. Uh, Burke Holder certainly in the process of making a shot all the way. I'm just glad I'm sitting over here and not out there in yeah. black and white. And, and, and you know how interesting it was that two different officials saw two different things, but given the opportunity, they... Let's watch this official here. didn't show anything she just showed a foul yeah. so she didn't commit so that's good officiating indeed they'll keep uh, keep that foul on Kirby it is her fourth and Vanderbilt with the possession with 105 and counting Vanderbilt gets it into the hands of Foji. Again, she's a playmaker. She and Lister. Down low it goes. Webb. Oh, she looked like she pivoted her feet there. Webb with the play in. She picked up the pivot foot, I thought, on that play. But Webb, but Webb gives Vanderbilt the 75-73 lead. Let's watch it again here. Well, that's actually the lay in. All right, there it is. Again, the lay-in from the other angle. That was after the, uh, she had, re Bovey returned it to her for that layup to give Vanderbilt the lead earlier on when she was working against, uh, or working down low. Trying to get it inside the first time was that potential uh, foot lift. Either way, it is 75 points when it all said done for Vanderbilt. And the Dukes take that time out to try and draw something up here that will get them two or potentially three with 43 to go. Somehow coming into this game, you mentioned we forget what day of the week it was. All I was thinking about what a good game this was going to be. Yes. All right, a couple of possessions at the very least. Jiggets after Rothman gets some separation from Lister, and we got a foul away from the basketball. A hold will be called against Webb, and she will be DQ'd with 34 seconds to go. Her fifth personal comes on a hold of Jiggets, and Jiggets goes to the free throw line. She'll shoot two with 34.2 seconds to go, and the home Dukes down by the Deuce. Uh, that's so key because of the work that Webb had been doing down low. To pull in uh, the rebound, she has eight. That's a team high for Vanderbilt. 15 points, second highest scoring after Foji. And that's just going to be a tough, tough loss for these 34.2 seconds and potentially. Coach Brooks kind of going the casual look today. Certainly no casuality in his mind at this <laughs> no, point in time. No, it, there is not a look of casualness on his face. Thank you. Is that what I was looking for? <laughs> That's all right. It, 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 all, it all means the same. I just went for it. <laughs> He's just hoping this game doesn't become a casualty. <laughs> <laughs> when I said it, I was thinking that. I was like, that doesn't sound right. 75-74. 75 all. Into the hands of the playmaker, Lister. Right away for the Commodores. Mickens breaking down defensively. Into the hands it goes of Beatty. Driving, trying to get around the screen, and laying it in is Foji. What a bucket by the senior. 
And not bad defense by James no, Madison on that all. play either. Not at all. You take a look and you see Burkholder and Jiggets both are on Foji. Foji just puts it up and gets a, a sweet roll in. And uh, they did a good job there, did Burkholder and Jiggets. Foji just found the slightest of ability to put it up there and get it to roll in. We have 18 seconds remaining. Timeout, James Madison. Duke's called a 30-second timeout. Dukes will inbound it into the hands of Mickens. Wathme drives off the weak side. Rebound up and in. Tickets. Six seconds to go. The inbounds comes in. It's Lister. Four seconds. It goes to Foji off the rim. And we're going to get a jump ball. And we've got... 0.3 seconds remaining. What a series. Tied at 77. And they're going to go check the monitors to make sure that the time, I would think, actually, Jam, you called a timeout yeah, instead. I thought they may check the monitor to make sure that what's on the game clock matches the action. But they're not going to do that. So well, no need. we got .3 seconds to go. We're good with that. There's the putback by Jiggets on the other end, which was a fantastic play to grab that rebound. And now we have Lister gets it off to Foji. Foji, she had probably one of her cleaner looks yeah. <laughs> in the most recent past. And that was just because everything was rushed up, I think. Yeah, she, she just did. She hurried herself a little bit. But, you know, it's hard when you've got that mental clock to know. All right, let's see what they do with 3.3 .3 to go. They lofted in. They did manage to get a shot off. How about that? And they got it to uh, Bovey, the tallest person on the court at the moment. Bounces off, though. Now well, the Dukes avoid... Something that happened to them earlier this season. The loss to Wright State was on a three-pointer at the buzzer. And they got the play they wanted. They got the height of Bovey up there. She volleyed it up. Really could not take control of it because if she comes down, time is going to be off the clock. It was a great play drawn up by Coach Balcom. And, you know, it's I'm sure something that is practiced time and time again. Bovey. Like you said, Kurt, was the one that they wanted to take that shot because of her positioning and because of her height on the court, especially since now Webb fouled out of the game and now fouled out of overtime. And Bovey had a, a great look at it. And if it given it just an inch more, it probably would have rolled in for the Vanderbilt victory. But instead, we get a tie ball game at, uh, at 77. Yeah, Bovey at six feet was the tallest player on the court. One of their other options, actually their tallest option, Kendall Shaw, I think she's out with an injury as well, their center. Yeah, we haven't seen her or Kristen Gaffney, who's listed at 6'1". Everybody else, I mean, you got Lister checking in 5'4", um, Foji checking in at 5'9". By comparison, you know, for, for JMU, Mickens at 5'7 is probably your smallest player on the court at any given time. Yeah, Shaw at 6'4, out with a knee injury, played in 23 games as a freshman a year ago. But not available today. But they went to Heather Bovey. And Bovey will be who's going to end up taking the tip here to start overtime. And the ball is tapped into Newman, who eventually hikes it back onto the playing surface. And Vanderbilt with possession.
Schlon with a long range three as well off the mark. Rebound comes down to Newman. We haven't heard from Schron here in a while, but she's in, I'm sure, because of the web foul out earlier. She'll get a little more playing time today. Checks in with eight points. Burkholder gives it up to Jiggets. Shot clock down to 10 now. Wafney takes the three pointer, and it's an air ball. So both teams missing on their first shots in the overtime period. And the similarities between these two series, not only here, but throughout the whole game. And throughout the programs, as I mentioned in the opening. Not a surprise this game has gone into extra play. Blister down low. Bovey tries to drop it down. Does so. And a foul. Beatty puts it up and gets some contact in the process. Wathme, her third personal. And Newman was in the area with the four fouls. You really don't want to see her out. Wathme just her third. Rattling it in is Beatty. She just has three points. That's her first trip to the free throw line. She's a 60% free throw shooter, 12 of 20 prior to that free throw. And overall, she's got her average or close to it of 4.6 points per game. This is the second rebound Burkholder. 78-77, Vanderbilt with the lead again. Mickens to Guathme. Guathme. And the ball comes out free to Jiggets. Shot clock is down to 13 seconds. Jiggets, foul line jumper. In and out and in again. Jiggets with 21 points. Dukes take the lead, 79-78. Tron drives. Gets the ball deflected by Guathme. Rebound comes out to the Dukes. Here's Mickens. Slows it down. She'll circle back out. As we approach three minutes to play in our first overtime period. Knocked away. Foji on the defensive end this time. Well, certainly you see there the shot by Toya. And certainly within the last... 10 minutes or so of the second half, she really became the hot hand for the Dukes. Checking in with 23 points now. Hall has come in for Guathme. Jiggets again. Jiggets drives, pulls up, jumper, good. Career high for Toya Jiggets. She ties it. No, 25, you're right, excuse me. I was a bucket behind on my score sheet. And that ball blocked by Okafer. Rebound comes right back into the hands of Bovey. Laid up, off the rim it goes. Lister misses the Snowbird. The Dukes with a rebound, a three-point lead, and the basketball with 2.19 to go. And she tried to get it inside to Okafer. Stolen away by the Vanderbilt Commodores. Flying right back down the floor, kicked by Mickens. 2.02 remains. Nikki Newman will come back in. Newman with four fouls will replace Jiggets. Guafme will streak in as well, replacing Burkholder. And the Commodores also, Jasmine Jenkins comes in. I haven't seen her here in a while. Jenkins, the freshman, is scoreless today, but a good free throw shooter. So it's an offensive switch. Three pointer is good by Foji. Oji with 27 points. She is five. I'll make that seven now from her career high of 34. Timeout JMU. We're tied at 81. By the way, chicken nuggets for everybody. You know, I didn't even hear it. It, it happened, but it seemed to just blow over the entire crowd here at the Convocation Center because of the intensity of this game right now. And I'm sure also because as soon as that happened, Vanderbilt was probably on the other side of the court. <laughs> That's probably right. 
And the way it goes here, if uh, the Dukes hit 79, then everybody that takes a ticket to Chick-fil-A in the next couple of days will receive a free uh, serving of Chick-fil-A nuggets. Now you saw the three by Poji, five of 12 from beyond the arc. That ties her season high. 9 of 22 overall. She had eight made against Virginia last year. That's her career high. Attempted 17 in that same game. She's attempted 12 here tonight. So Foji checking in with her 27 points. Clearly uh, the Commodore's hot hand as Toya Jiggins is JMU. Dukes two out of three here in the second uh, or in this overtime period, 0 for 1 on three pointers. Vanderbilt one for five in the extra period, one for two on Trey's at one three pointer by Fogey, who is five for 12 on three pointers. Nine of 22 from all points on the floor and four of seven at the free throw line. Dukes with the basketball. A buck 50 to go. Tied up at 81. Rothme called four steps. I thought she was going to get away with that one. Good call by the official. Certainly she was trying to get it out of her hands as to perhaps not be noticed. Well, that kind of wastes the timeout situation, too. You don't get a yeah. shot off in a circumstance where you take the timeout. Absolutely. All right, here's the freshman, Jasmine Jenkins. Again, a good free throw shooter, so they've got her in during this stretch. Down low it goes. Nice up and in by Bovey. She has eight. Bandy recaptures the lead, 83-81. Jiggets looking for a cutter. Here's Newman up high. Nikki Burkholder, step back, three-pointer. Off the iron, no good. Tapped out by Rothme, but into the hands of Bovey. Big possession now for the Commodores. As we approach 60 seconds to go in our overtime. Mr. Kavanaugh lets everybody know a minute remains. Lister feeds it over. Jenkins. Forgy. Try to get it down low. Turnaround shot. No good. Rebound. Nikki Newman protects the basketball. Wraps both arms around it. And another timeout. JMU down by two, gonna try and draw up the perfect play here with the 40 seconds remaining. Reminder, the Dukes will take a little bit of time off between uh, this game and their next. Get some holiday vacation. And we'll return back to the Convocation Center after uh, Christmas, hosting the JMU Invitational December the 29th and 30th. Be a part of that triple header on December the 30th. Yep, Dukes will face Ohio, the Bobcats on the 29th at 2.30, right after the Norfolk State UMBC ball game. The winners will meet at 2.30 on Monday. The losers will meet at noon on Monday. Of course, we'll have all of the JMU games on Madison HD Sportsnet, presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association, and then that triple header on Monday. Rothme drives to the hole. She takes it too strong. Rebound, Jiggets. Jiggets back again too strong. Rebound is corralled by the Commodores, and doing so, it's Morgan Beatty. Not once, but twice the Dukes got a shot close to the rim. Well, Burkholder forced to foul, her fifth. So she will have to sit down here for the final 26.1. So Newman will come back in for Madison. And it'll be Beatty at the free throw line. 
Again, a 60% shooter. Doesn't have a big sample to work with. She'll get two shots here with 26.1 to play. In overtime. Rattles in. Makes it a three-point ball game. Next shot for Beatty. It, too, is good. That's a two-possession game now as Beatty with five points. And an 85-81 Vanderbilt advantage. And Mandy will take the timeout. This time, trying to draw up the perfect defense. Five eighty-one Vanderbilt on top. Beatty three for four from the line now. After making those two, she'll grab five points. Newman will inbound it. Her quiet four points gets it into Muff Mickens. Mickens. Tries to drive all the way. Got the ball kicked out of bounds. Nikki Newman, the redshirt senior, will gather the Dukes on the crown to one of the Duke dog heads here. Inbounds goes to no one. And coming up with it, let's see, they're going to say the Dukes turned the basketball over with 17.1 seconds to go. Kenny Brooks saying foul right away, foul right away. Inbounds goes to that big free throw shooter. It goes to Jenkins. Precious Hall forced to call, be called for the foul. That'll be Precious' third foul. And this will send Jenkins to the free throw line. Again, Jenkins has made 26 consecutive free throws. Not anymore. Streak there ended, so both teams have a free throw streak ended tonight. She also doesn't have a point, even though she's averaging seven per game. That one rolls and spins out. Newman is fouled. Well, that's an interesting case. I, I don't know if you could get any better than that uh, for the team you do. No, you can't because uh, it stops the clock. It took barely a second off. The only, the only thing that could have been better was if it were – a player that shoots at a higher percentage. Ah, uh, yes. But Newman may just step up there and hit them both. Also, that uh, is Beatty's fifth, so they'll have to find somebody to sub in for her. Will the Commodores? They're gonna bring in Long. And Nikki Newman will go to the free throw line. Duke's down by four. She does get two shots here. Needs to get at least one of them, and she does. I say one because you get a defensive stop. You got a chance to tie it. She is two for two. Shame on me. <laughs> I was about to say, Kurt, did we reverse jinx her? I one? think that that's what we tried to do. Now foul right away. Barely a second off again. 85-83. Back to the other end we go. And this time it'll be Lister going to the free throw line as Muff Mickens puts her there. Goodbye, Lister. 14 points. 14 for her, 27 for Poji. That's going to tumble in. Thought it was going to go off the iron at first. You and me both. 87-83. Mickens puts it down in a hurry. Drives. And she'll bank it in. Mickens, her first field goal, and an immediate foul as the ball comes back inbounds. Foji is going to be the one who is fouled. 
And Newman will also dis be disqualified. That's her fifth personal. Eighty-seven, eighty-five. Destiny Jones, she'll check in for the Dukes. Destiny, a sophomore out of Miramar, Florida, averaging 3.6 points, 2.4 rebounds. 67% free throw shooter, 47% shooter. Foji at the line, shooting two. Three-point game again. 28 for the senior out of Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Second shot is also through. Again, a four-point difference. Paul, three-pointer at the buzzer, won't go. Wouldn't have been enough to catch up anyway, and Vanderbilt will get a quality win over the Dukes of James Madison. 89-85 for the big JMU Dukes. Certainly a disappointment here on the home floor with the SEC foe coming in here to the Convocation Center. Vanderbilt built as much as a 10-point lead in the contest. That in the first half was 6.57 to go. The Dukes had an 8-point lead also in the first half with 16.44 to play in the first. Eventually, JMU caught the Commodores. They tied it up on seven occasions. The lead changed hands three times, and the last to the Commodores of Vanderbilt University. We'll come back with the wrap-up of our statistics and of our ball game here. Vanderbilt the winner, 89-85. Back with more after this timeout. You're watching JMU women's basketball on Matazone HD Sportsnet. Presented to you by the JMU Alumni Association. Visit the James Madison University Bookstore. Your source for all things JMU. Get your official Duke gear. Open after every football game. The JMU Bookstore. Support the team. Welcome back to the James Madison University Convocation Center. Kurt Dudley and Taylor Mickleberry with you. A very good ball game tonight, as we certainly did anticipate here this evening with the Vanderbilt Commodores and the JMU Dukes clashing with identical eight and two records, but they'll be separated by a win now as JMU drops to eight and three. The Dukes have a somewhat modest three-game winning streak snapped, and the Vanderbilt Commodores, well, they extend their winning streak to six in a row, winning a good game on the road and improving to nine and three this year. But uh, the type of game we, we did anticipate, Taylor. Yeah, coming into it, it, it just felt like it was going to be. they on, on paper, yes, Vanderbilt, they lead a lot of categories in the nation. We see why and what a great offense they run. Um, but, you know, we saw here that just because the Dukes on paper don't look as uh, nice stats-wise, it's, it's a very good team that the Dukes have here to be able to keep up with this Vanderbilt team that is tops in the nation. I don't think there's any question that this JMU – Duke's basketball team is going to go very, very far throughout the CAA play and, and how they are able to handle themselves. Um, and I think it, it was a great showing. They have, you know, of course, lost, lost a sting, but they have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of after this performance. Um, you know, Toya Jiggets had a, a great showing in the second half and uh, came out here, finished off with uh, 25 points for her, as well as she was one of uh, five JMU Dukes in double figures. And, and how do you compete with Christina Foji? She was just absolutely phenomenal. 29 points, followed up by Jasmine Lister with 16 points. Um, so a good showing for, for, I think, all sides here tonight. Points in the paint. JMU with an advantage there, 36-30. Off turnovers, JMU 23-20. Second chance points, JMU 21-12. Fast break points, JMU 3-0. Off the bench, the, the uh, 
Commodores 34, JMU with 15. Well, and I thought about it coming in about, you know, the bench points, how Vanderbilt was going to have to to make a, you know, they're going to have to find who's going to fill in for, for Dahlman, who's out with an injury for indefinitely. And I think that they found that switching up a lot of different players works. I mean, you look at, at Webb with her 15. She had started some games, not so much, maybe p- potentially a starter candidate for that position throughout the rest of the season. Also, Schron, eight points there. And uh, and Kylie Smith as well. She had uh, two. Morgan Beatty with five. Um, and then on, on the rebounding side, I think, you know, you have Webb who just kind of dominated the boards down low for, for Vanderbilt. The Jiggets, uh, again, with the 25 points, establishes a career high. She finished with 14 rebounds, did the uh, junior from Norfolk, Virginia as well. And she really, you talk about those second chance points, and, and she was a big factor for that with, uh, with her grabbing in um, rebounds wise offensively nine of them compared to her five defensive rebounds that's not a career high for a toya though she had 17 on uh february the 12th 2013 so last february 17 there in her hometown of norfolk against the monarchs of old dominion she finishes with 25 14 points for precious hall 15 for kirby burkholder before she fouled out jasmine guafme finishes with 10 and 13 for lauren okafer uh, just uh, three shy of her JMU career high. Some other scores from around the uh, CA and women's play tonight. Most of them are final. Actually, all of them are final now. Earlier today, Charleston beat uh, Coastal Carolina 80-62. to Morgan State beat Towson 69-63. to A little bit of surprise there. It was Hampton over Drexel. That's a big surprise. 50-47, to a Drexel-like score. But usually the uh, Dragons are on the other side of that. And William and Mary over Radford, 67 to 53. Marist really thumped Northeastern. I don't know anything about the Red Foxes, but 103 for the Red Foxes to 66 for Northeastern. Looks like Northeastern played with just four players tonight. And a future foe for the Dukes, nationally ranked North Carolina, 46, and South Carolina, 33. That to just five minutes in to the second half. Also, men's basketball. The Dukes they couldn't put together a back-to-back win streak. After winning uh, against uh, High Point this past Saturday down in the Greensboro area, uh, the Dukes fall to the Greensboro Spartans tonight, 78-65. to So the Dukes now 3-9, and nine, and they will be idle. Uh, well, no, they're going to be back on the floor on Saturday as they'll be at playing in the Richmond Coliseum in the Governor's Cup. They'll be facing the Hampton Pirates at 3 o'clock, and that'll be followed by Virginia Tech and VCU. Taylor, final thoughts on today's ball game? You know, I, I just I, I love watching this team play, um, and to watch them play a team like Vanderbilt that uh, really competes at the same level from a style-wise, uh, high-paced, it was a lot of fun. This Jamie Dukes team is, is so much fun to watch, um, and it, it, it's just it's a pleasure to watch them go out there and have fun and get, get wins. You know, today wasn't a win, but like I said, a lot to be proud of. Just a three-point loss, uh, making a four-point loss in overtime. And uh, I think I see good things coming up for this team, and it's going to be fun to watch them through CAA play when they start it here later in the month and that tournament here at the end of this month. All right, Taylor, thank you very much for uh, brushing off the old retirement jacket there and coming on out. Always a pleasure. Uh, Retirement. We're just joking, of course. Taylor will hang around forever if we let him. So, <laughs> Don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you be the judge. No, it's good. We're glad yeah. glad you're able to help us out here tonight uh, for uh, our production here on Matazone HD Sportsnet. Uh, some other folks I'd like to thank here tonight. Uh, Vanderbilt Sports Information Director David Dawson, JMU Women's SID's Devin Howard and Brian Hansen, a JMU Assistant Athletics Director for Athletics Communication, John Martin. Our executive producer was John Salem. Director Jake Tomko. Also want to thank the rest of the staff from Telemedia Productions for all the fine camera work here this evening. Also thanks to our sponsor as tonight's game has been brought to you by the JMU Alumni Association, Comcast Sportsnet, the JMU Graduate School, Intellos Wireless, the JMU Bookstore, Residence Inn, and Fox Hill Townhomes. Our next broadcast of JMU Women's Basketball will be on Sunday, December the 29th, as the Dukes, they will face uh, the Ohio Bobcats in the uh, first day of the JMU Invitational. That will be the second game of the day. Game is scheduled to start about 2.30, and, of course, that can vary with the game being played prior to that. But you certainly 
We invite you to join us for that ball game. We'll only have the JMU games during the tournament. And then on Monday, the 30th, a triple header here. We'll have a consolation game at 1230, uh, hope, at 12 o'clock. Hopefully the Dukes will be playing at 2.30 in the championship game, facing either UMBC, the Retrievers, or the Spartans of Norfolk State. And uh, then that night, we'll have the JMU men's basketball Dukes against the Cardinals of Ball State. That's an 8 o'clock tip-off. A little later tip because the earlier basketball to be played here in the afternoon. So they need to clear out uh, plenty of time in between. By the way, if you come to the women's tournament and pick up a tournament ticket, you can come into the men's game free of charge that uh, Monday night as the Dukes battle Ball State. So that will wrap it up here uh, from the JMU Convocation Center. On behalf of everyone at James Madison University, a very happy holidays to you. I uh, do invite you to uh, join us on Madison HD Sportsnet Audio on Saturday. JMU men's basketball against Hampton. Pre-game coverage begins at 2.30 from the Richmond Coliseum. For Taylor Mickleberry, I'm Kurt Dudley saying so long, everyone. Once again, our final score tonight from the JMU Convocation Center in overtime. Vanderbilt tops the JMU Dukes 89-85. Good night, everyone.